guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions and what I thought we could do is make the little pockets that I did a tutorial on um, a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago. So I have bought along a bunch of papers here, a whole different um, variety, including some sheet music. So if you haven't got kind of decorative papers or anything, then don't worry, you can always use sheet music. You could use plain um, coffee dyed paper, <clears throat> excuse me, plain coffee dyed paper um, or other kind of dyed papers um, of your choosing. I would probably recommend it's not too thick. So, I mean, these are printed on like 102 GSM, which I know I always say this, but it's just slightly thicker than copy paper. Um, and obviously the sheet music, this is not the flimsiest sheet music, but it's, it's not too, too thick. Um, if you're using scrapbook paper, again, I would try and select them that are not too, too thick, only because it may become a bit bulky, but you know, I mean, it probably wouldn't be the end of the world. So you may have seen my tutorial obviously recently. If you didn't, let's just quickly go over what we're going to do. So I'm going to take this page here. Now this is from my Woodland Wonders kit. Uh, as you can see, I didn't print this borderless, so I probably could do with trimming down my edges slightly. <clears throat> I was pausing there because I'm not too sure really whether it's going to matter because I'm not too sure whether uh, they would actually show too much if they're not trimmed down, but you know, they may do, so um, it's best to, to trim them in. And again, if you've got double-sided paper, that could save you a bit of effort later on. Um, I think most of mine are single-sided, unfortunately. I didn't really think ahead and uh, double-side them, but you know, that's fine. So what you're going to do, oops, I've got a bit of glue stuck on there. Right, what you're going to do is you're going to fold your piece in half. So on the, you know, the shorter kind of edge. So it's as if it were going into a journal, really. Okay, and then, you're going to go in with, now I'm only pausing because again, I'm trying to think which way I would like this. So I'm going to go in here like this. Okay, so you're going to make a large triangle, more or less up to that mid, uh, middle fold, but you know, not necessarily right up to there. And then you're going to turn your piece of paper over and exactly the same on the facing corner or the facing side into more or less the middle, but again, not right up to the middle. Okay, and then you're going to get your paper as you want it to be. And then when you fold it, you know, back in half, like that, this is going to be your pocket. So then what you're going to do is just fold it in to bring your two edges to meet like that okay so i'm just going to push that down still haven't located my bone folder would you believe <laughs> there we go so that's your pocket and then of course you can go back in and you can do all of your gluing so i'm just going to quickly glue these bits all down so you know don't have to worry too much but just just so they're not flapping about i mean i don't really know whether it would you know, make too much difference, but it's best to um, glue them down, I guess. So, okay, and like that. So you may want to have your little glue spreader. In my case, I just like to use, you know, debit card or credit card or gift card or, you know, anything that's kind of old and I don't need anymore. That's one of those gift cardy shaped things. Okay, and then you've got your things, uh, your pockets there, and you're going to just fold these over. And then all I do, I mean, you could be really neat, I guess, and tuck it into there. I would then, whoa, sorry. I would then add a little line of glue here on that edge, if you see what I mean. And then a little line of glue here on this edge. Okay, and then you're going to just tuck your piece in we could just tuck it in there. That just kind of makes it extra neat. And then, you know, if it's worrying you, you could add some glue here to just squash that little flap there. 
Okay, so then you're going to spread your glue down like that. And then all you're going to do, and you could have obviously done this first, but you can then just run a bead of glue here inside your, or you know, at the bottom. So, and I will probably swap around how I do this because I'm not too sure, to be honest, whether it's better to actually do it like we've just done it or whether it's easier to just glue it as you go. But that's your pocket. And obviously if you've got what's happened here on mine, you can just trim that off now like that. Okay. And then obviously completely up to you, but you might want to, you know, use some book page or something like that. So I'll just take some book page here. This one's actually a bit dark for this particular paper so I probably wouldn't really use this but I'll just cut it down to kind of demonstrate you can obviously then fill in your your back section with you know some book page or sheet music or other decorative paper um, if you like and again same here so that's what I'm saying if you've got double-sided paper they also would work wonderfully and they would obviously save you possibly from doing that but you are going to have the join excuse me would you believe my phone's ringing hold on sorry about that that was my dad so I just quickly had a quick chat with him right I'm um yeah so we've done the first one so we'll run through that again because I know that you know, they're super simple because, as you know, I never do anything that's not super simple. The only thing is remembering to... Ooh, <laughs> got an envelope stuck on there. Um, remembering to do your folds the right way. So, aside from that, I mean, it just doesn't get any easier. So, we fold in here like that. And then you're going to take your first corner, fold it down just near the middle. It doesn't have to be touching the middle. In fact, you probably don't want it touching the middle because then it may, you know, um, interfere when folding. And, whoops, I'll glue these down now to save me actually messing about doing them in a minute. So, just glue that one down. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not claiming these to be original, but I had never seen them before when I did them a few weeks ago and yeah as I say I mean I never ever ever do anything complicated so if I'm doing it you know it's going to be you know it's going to be easy I couldn't do anything complicated even if I wanted to so <laughs> okay and then we fold that one over and again just going to glue that down here like that okay and go over there like that. Okay. And then you're going to bring your fold back over. And at this point, you just want to make sure that you've got them folded towards the back, if you see what I mean. So each of your triangles, they're both facing away from you. If you do it this way round, you're going to end up with this kind of effect, which, you know, I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. But... This is just better, probably. So make sure both of your triangles folded over are folding away from you when you fold it over. And then you're going to take the back section in one side and then in the other side. Okay, like that. And then all you're going to do is literally glue those two sections together so this is where I say you know it doesn't really matter how you glue this bottom section down we glued it just now after we would glued the pocket together but I'll glue it across here for this one and then you can decide which method suits you best or maybe you'll be like me and just <laughs> chop and change you may want to just glue this little triangle piece down um, you know completely up to you so that one's in there and then here I'm just going to run a little bead of glue up here like that and then a bead of glue up the edge of this one. Whoa. 
like that. And then we just, again, press that down like that. And then at this point, I'm just going to run just a little bit of glue here just to hold that down. I mean, you don't really have to, but just in case it kind of, you know, gets in the way. I mean, it shouldn't really, but just in case it did. And again, that's your pocket now. So, you know, you could stitch around the edge of these. I think we did when I did my tutorial a few weeks back, um, but you don't have to. And then again, if you want to cover up the back piece, because even though this is this isn't double sided, but it's obviously been coffee dyed, so it looks better, better than this white one. You might not want that, you know, two different sort of halves there going on. So you can always then fill that in again with some book page or sheet music or something like that. So that's those two. I'll do one more kind of talking you through. Um, you know, I'm not being sort of patronising or anything, but I just think it's quite helpful to. Um, talk you through what we're doing so this piece of paper here again you can see this is not double-sided this one I think is actually on thinner um, copy paper so more like your regular 80 GSM copy paper again we're going to go just fold that in half and then I'm going to do it this way around this time so we fold in near to that crease okay I'm going to glue that down right now so as it's just done then saves me unfolding it and opening it back out. And I mean obviously these don't have to be a particular size paper, really all you need is a rectangle. So I'm using A4 paper which is our standard copy size but if you've got something slightly different, slightly you know I know that in the US there are different, you know, the your copy size is different to ours. It's still going to work. You're just really looking for a rectangle of some sort. And then what I'm going to do is just the opposite corner, like that. Okay, so I mean, basically all you're doing is making sure that your folds both go the same direction. Do you see, you know, kind of like that and like that. So again then I'm just going to glue this down because it just saves me, you know, unfolding it, going back in, gluing it. Like that. Again can just spread the glue. Okay, and then again, this is my decorative piece which I want towards me. So I'm just going to then fold it back in here and then I'm going to turn it over and again fold my back half in like that and like that. Okay, so at this point I'm just going to glue this little triangle just, you know, literally just running it down along that edge. And then again, completely up to you whether you want to glue this now, kind of as you go or whether you want to do it afterwards, but you know, I think either's fine. And then you're just going to run your glue down the outside edge of one flap. And again, it doesn't really matter which way around they go. And on the outside edge of the other flap, so that when they close, you've just kind of managed to clamp them shut somehow. Just move that up slightly. Okay. And then I'm just going to run a bead of glue here along that sort of triangle there so again just dab that dab that off okay and then you know like I say if you've got anywhere like just here you can probably see I've just got that fraction of paper that's kind of over overhanging slightly you can just trim that down okay so and that one's the Paris Daisy papers so I'm trying to remember to to mention what papers I'm using so, and thank you so much to all those lovely people who said that they do like to know what paper I'm using. Right, so I'm going to do another one. This is using an Artsology um, paper. So, as you can see, this has not printed, you know, I have not printed this borderless. So, I'm going to trim this down. And this, although is a rectangle, it's slightly, um, what would you say, like a fatter, I suppose, fatter rectangle. So... 
again, I'm just going to go in, cut that down, cutting the borders off like that, and then just along the bottom like that. Okay, and we're going to do the same again, just trying to work out which side I want showing. It's lovely paper, I'm not sure which way I want showing. Um, oh, do I want that side or do I want that side? This one's lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably go for this one. Right, so again, I'm going to just bring this fold down approximately to the middle. You know, don't have to worry too much. Again, I'll just glue that down just to save me unfolding it again. And then we squash that down with the card and then we turn it over and exactly the same as we did on the other side but now you know now going into the uh, patterned paper side again just gluing that down like that folding that over like that Oops. Okay. And then again, taking my pattern side, putting it this way like that. And then again, just literally folding in to the center. You know, I mean, obviously it doesn't have to be right in the center, you know, completely up to you kind of how you fold them in, but you just want it sort of approximately, I guess, to the middle. And then this one here so oops I've just squashed in my corner for some reason don't know why that happened okay and that's that pocket I mean as you can see this one's gone slightly skew if um, I must have not really folded this side in very much compared to the other side but to be honest you know it doesn't really matter it doesn't look sort of too strange or anything but if that happens I've just folded it over slightly more now and hopefully that will just kind of sort that out anyway so I mean you know they're quite forgiving if you get your folds kind of in the wrong place you know to according to where you want them that is and then again just run your bead of glue down the middle well not down the middle down down the bottom and then we just fold that in and then a bead of glue on each of these edges to obviously stick the back together. And again, I can just tuck that in there perhaps. Like that. And then I can just run a bead of glue down there as well. Just to glue that down. Again, just take my dry wipe and sort of dab it up. Okey. And again, I'm just going to trim that up a bit because it's gone a bit sort of wonky at the back, but that's fine. And again, you know, just to kind of show you if we then put, you know, the book page in to decorate the back of it. Just looks lovely, doesn't it? So absolutely super simple pockets. So I'll be quiet now probably about the process because of course, you know, it's not really too complicated. And I'm just going to make a couple with the um, sheet music papers here. Um, just one, one extra thing, sorry, just before I be quiet about what we're doing. Obviously this one is kind of a bigger, fatter sort of rectangle. So I haven't done one with um, the sheet music yet. So I'm just hoping that this is going to pan out okay. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't, but it might be that we get a sort of slightly stumpier pocket or something. I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, just play around with your rectangles and, um, yeah, play around with the pockets generally and just, you know, have fun. So, there we go. Right, I will be quiet now and we'll just relax and have a nice time crafting. I hope everyone's doing well. 
and hope you've all had a nice week and a good weekend and things. I'm filming this on the Monday, which I generally tend to film these on the Monday before I put them up on the Tuesday. So I have an apology to make to everybody. If you have been following my Tidy Friday um, workshops, which obviously go out on a Friday, I do apologise for some reason. I have uploaded the wrong video on Friday. Um, I mean, it probably doesn't really matter hugely, but it was only when reading the comments, obviously, that a few people had mentioned my new shelf and um, my pegboard. And I thought, oh, that's strange. You know, perhaps I've talked about getting one. No, when I then looked, I have uploaded the wrong video too early. So if, <laughs> if you're joining me for the Tidy Fridays, which thank you so much if you are, um, this week on Friday, we're going to Ikea. Yay! <laughs> so hopefully you will join me and my son on a trip to Ikea. And I will share with you all of the things that I buy from Ikea. Um, and also I do, yep, delve into that awful cupboard that of course is just oh, like a tip and I should just be very, very embarrassed really to actually delve into it at all, particularly on video. <clears throat> I've done the same thing again there. So I guess that's the only thing to be a bit aware of is if you've got slightly obscure size rectangle, you may have this situation where you've got one side bigger than the other. I mean, I don't think that looks too terrible, but you know, just something to be aware of, I guess. Um, yes, so if you've been joining me for the Tidy Fridays, I hope you, you'll um, join me this week because my son and I take a trip to Ikea. So, yep, I'm filming in Ikea. Um, share with you all of the goodies that I bought. Um, I have quite a, quite a spend up there because I've been obviously budgeting for it for a few weeks. Um, well, quite a while actually. Through the lockdown, I started thinking about, you know, things that might make my life easier. Um, and I obviously then share with you all the things that I buy. And um, yep, I make a start on my horrendous cupboard. I have to say, yep, I still have a lot more to do, um, but at least I've made a start on it. And um, yeah, so I hope that, you know, you'll join me and my son at Ikea on Friday. So we had great fun filming that video, being out and about. It was, it was good fun. So uh, yeah, I'd love it if you join me for that on Friday. And <laughs> a bit of a newsflash really, is I have made significant progress. So I'm actually like a week ahead in filming for the Tidy Fridays. I think it's, yeah, I think it's a week ahead. Um, so yeah, the following week, oh my gosh, you won't believe the progress that I have made. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that. So that will be in a couple of weeks, but this Friday coming, it's trip to Ikea with me and my son. So um, yeah, I hope that you'll join us for that. And I do apologise for the complete mishap of uploading the videos in the wrong order. Honestly, it's it's tricky because I do try and film ahead because I'm always terrified that something's going to happen and I won't get a chance to film. Um, but therefore, obviously, keeping track of the order that they've been filmed in because sometimes, you know, when I upload them, obviously, I would try and upload them in order but sometimes there's a reason why I can't, like one might need editing further or, you know, something else. And so to save time, I think, oh, I'll just upload that one while I'm editing this one. And of course, that's how things like that then happen. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's all a little bit chaotic sometimes with the the uploads. But anyway, I do apologise for um, for that. And it's annoying from my point of view, because obviously I wanted it to be exciting because you know you guys would have joined me for the shopping trip and so it would have been a shared experience then of then seeing the new things that I had bought so it was just disappointing really you know from my point of view because I thought oh no you know the things that we were going to share together I've now already shared with you but before the <laughs> before the initial share but yeah anyway thank you so much for watching and um, all your lovely encouragement. And I have to say, you know, the progress that I have made 
particularly over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, the videos that haven't gone up yet. Oh my goodness me, <laughs> my life's feeling completely transformed. I don't know about you guys, but you know, if ever you decorate a room or something, I don't know about you, but I have to keep on going into that room to keep looking at it because I feel excited. Or, you know, heaven forbid, sometimes I've made the wrong decision with decorating and then I can't bear looking at it, you know, and have to build up the courage to say to my husband, oh, I don't like that. We're going to have to, you know, redo it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, thankfully that doesn't happen too, too much, but I'm sure that we're all a little bit like that because I know that my mum and my sisters, they... Um, they occasionally make those little decorating mistakes so you know we can't be the only ones I'm sure but um anyway yeah I don't know about you guys but if we decorate somewhere I love going into the room and kind of keep seeing how it looks now and that's how I am now with my my craft area because finally finally it's I mean, I can't claim it's tidy. Of course I can't, you know, because a lot of it is really just moving one pile <laughs> to somewhere else. Um, you know, it's a like never ending saga. But having said that, I have eliminated a lot of piles. And um, yeah, I'm feeling really positive and really excited for the progress. And um, yeah, I do have to keep on coming up and having a look you know like before I go to bed so we've been downstairs and I've not then seen my craft room for a little while I uh, just before I go up to bed or just you know down obviously well up because we've been downstairs by that point but I have to then pop up to the loft and just see my my newly laid out newly organized craft area because I'm like oh I cannot wait to get to my craft area tomorrow so yeah and I'm really trying, really trying to keep on top of it. I mean, I have to say, I've still, obviously, I've still got the piles on my desk. Of course, they're just not going to disappear anytime soon. Um, <laughs> you know, I suspect anyway. But definitely, definitely, the rest of the area is, wow, like transformed unrecognisably. Well, to me, unrecognisably, I'm sure to a lot of people, they'd still think, oh my gosh, look at that lady's messy area. Um, but to me, it feels super tidy. So, and hopefully to a lot of you guys, it will too, because I think as crafters, you know, it's hard to keep a tidy area when we're busy crafting all the time. So I'm just going to do one with this. So again, I just need to chop these white borders off because I've not printed this border either. And again, this is my Victorian Floral Set 3. Oops. There we go. So the weather seems to have taken a bit of a change now because um, I've spent obviously months of complaining how hot I am. And suddenly now the weather has obviously taken a turn for autumn. So last week was the strangest week. Monday was really, really warm and really, really nice. In fact, to the point that after school, me and the kids went down to the beach, just literally for like 50 minutes and um, just had a little bit of downtime there and then came back, you know, to have dinner. And um, so that was on Monday and I think the temperature said it was like 23. So it was, you know, still really nice and warm. In fact, just perfect temperature. Then Tuesday, I think, was really nice as well. I'm sort of struggling to remember, but I think Tuesday was really nice as well. And then Wednesday had got quite a lot chillier, just suddenly. Thursday, it just absolutely poured down with rain for most of the day. Friday, wow, <laughs> it was like winter had set in. So by Friday evening, um, you know, when we went to bed and obviously Friday morning when we first got up, I think the temperature had gone down to seven. Seven. I mean, obviously during the day it wasn't seven, but yeah, in the morning and sort of in the evening, it went down to seven. And I think Saturday, when I got up on Saturday morning and even up to about half nine in the morning, it was six, six degrees. When you think only kind of like on the Monday, so just five days before, it had been 23. 
it's just really bizarre, <laughs> you know, kind of just, I mean, of course, we are nearly in October, so, you know, that's understandable, isn't it? But it just seemed really odd, you know, to think that just on the Monday, it had been so nice that we had gone down to the beach. And then by literally five days later, it was like really chilly to the point you needed like winter coats, you know, and a jumper. It was just really odd. And then today, today was chilly-ish. Not as chilly as it was over the weekend, I have to say. But um, yeah, I mean, it looks lovely and bright looking out there now. So it's one of those lovely cold, crisp days. So it's not too bad. Yesterday was really windy, really windy. Because we were going to go for a bike ride. It was just my husband, my daughter and myself because my youngest son was at work and my eldest son had gone out um, with a friend of his. They went paintballing. So it was just sort of the three of us and we were going to go for a bike ride. Wow, it was just too windy. We would have been blown everywhere on our bikes. Well, I doubt we'd have been blown ev everywhere, but, well, sadly, we wouldn't. It would have, in fact, had the opposite effect where it was just incredibly hard work to bike anyway. So, uh, yeah, we decided to give that a miss, but it just was really odd. And, yeah, today doesn't look like it's windy now. Well, it, it it's not windy, I don't think. But sometimes you can't really tell, can you, whether um, it's windy until you actually come to bike or something. Although... Yesterday, you didn't have to bike to know it was windy. It was really blowy. So, yeah, very strange. Okay. Just pop that one down there. I don't know whether I actually had any glue coming out then. Can't really see this glue particularly easy and now it seems to have started playing up. It's been really good for the whole video so far and now I thought it was all going a bit smoothly. And what else have I been up to? I played around a lot yesterday before my husband and my daughter and myself went out. I did a bit of playing around um, because I've had lots of people ask for some things to do with ribbons. Um, you know, following the Tidy Friday, so sorting out the ribbons. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously I do have a lot of ribbons and I think probably, you know, judging by the comments, a lot of you guys have, you know, ribbons as well. You know, predominantly perhaps from scrapbooking days or card making days and things like that. So I spent the weekend researching ribbons and... Um, coming up with some other things to do with ribbons. So I've, yeah, had a really nice time actually doing some other things. So next week's mass making, we will do something using ribbons and laces and things like that. Um, probably making some tassels. Now I don't have all the jewelry making stuff and all that kind of thing. So mine are going to be very rudimentary um, tassels and things like that. I mean, hopefully that's going to be great for a lot of you because, you know, possibly I'm not the only, or probably I'm not the only person who doesn't have all that other stuff like the, what do you call them? What are those things called? The jump rings and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't really want to kind of have to go buy more things. And also they're not probably my type of thing. I would be very, um, you know, I would find those types of things very, very fiddly. But, um... what was I saying yeah I can't I don't even know what they're called but I see lots of people use those little end cap things so I won't be using any of that or anything but we shall have some fun no less and I've made a couple to make sure that they <laughs> that they work out okay and hopefully they do so um yeah hopefully you'll join me next Tuesday and bring along your ribbons and your laces and you know trims and things like that so uh we shall have some fun I don't think we'll even need glue um, next week, but I, I could be wrong, but I don't think we will. So that's going to be our mass making for next week. So quite excited for that. I could have done it today, but I like to give people a bit of warning because I don't want, you know, kind of, it's annoying if you sit down with kind of paper and things, you know, 
thinking we're doing a paper project and then it turns out to be right I'm going to open another glue because this is <laughs> very frustrating um I did have one on hand because I just suspected that that might have happened uh yeah it's just frustrating if you've sat down with your paper and your glue and your scissors and things and then I say oh we're going to make you know fabric things today so I wanted to you know just give everyone a heads up that that's what I'm planning for next week and then hopefully you know maybe this week if you don't know where kind of some of your bits may be you know maybe dig some out and things um you know to do some as I say I mean I find personally things like that pretty fiddly anyway so mine are going to be very basic um but yeah I did try a couple out over the weekend and you know although they were basic they turned out lovely so um well I, I thought they were lovely so hopefully we'll have a really nice time and make some really fun fun tassels next week but I also have made something else which I haven't done a video of yet because I was just literally playing around and seeing what else I could do with my ribbons um so yeah in <laughs> it will probably be a few weeks until that video goes up because I haven't even made the video yet as I say but I do have another little thing planned that I made with the ribbons which I really, really, really loved how they turned out. So um, hopefully you will all really like that little um, idea to use your ribbons as well once, once I get around to actually filming that. But the reason I said about it is because <laughs> my hands are slightly mucky. Hopefully it's kind of, you know, I have managed to clean it up mostly, but if they just have a slightly bluish tinge, it's because I was dying, dying my ribbons and things. So, um, yeah, a <laughs> little bit messy I got yesterday. And luckily I did manage to just literally scrub and scrub and clean my hands off quite a bit because last night they were not looking too great. You know, my daughter was like, oh, mum, you know, oh, I don't think you should be doing videos with those hands. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it was a little bit, you know, touch and go for a bit. But thankfully, they have kind of come quite clean. Okay. Don't know what's going on with my shaky hand there, but oh, that was not very straight, was it? Let me just put just a line of glue down there. Okay. Yeah, because I do love ribbons. And I mean, the irony is I've got all those ribbons, but I still, if I go in a shop now, I would still look at ribbon. Now, why is that? Because, you know, we kind of talked about it in the Tidy Friday. I mean, I don't even really use ribbons very much anymore. Other than, you know, occasionally. <sighs> but I think it's just a bit like the thing with buttons. That, you know, if you quite like that type of thing, you're just drawn to them. Uh, I don't think I said, but this is my glue book favourites five. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Collage page. So that's what this paper is. Okay, let's do one with this. So, I mean, these are pretty quick, aren't they? And, um, you know, I love these types of projects where, I mean, they look quite fancy as if they could have really taken quite a bit of time, but actually they're, you know, they're pretty quick. You know, but they look sort of quite, quite well, not necessarily impressive, but, you know, like they've taken a bit of time to make. So, um, yeah, really really nice project this and you know I mean I haven't counted how many we've done but I feel like we've made quite a few already so they're definitely a quicker one to make I mean obviously I haven't filled in that back panel with any book page or anything like that but actually that's fine because then I think that's quite nice from a point of view of when you come to actually use them it might be nice to team them up with you know whatever it is that you're going to be using them in so if you were using something I don't know, that was predominantly blue or something. You could team them with some dark blue paper or something like that to tie them in. Um, so it's quite nice kind of leaving that back place, the back plate plain, because then you can just maybe tie it in a bit better with, you know, whatever you're going to use them for. Oops, I've got that messy now on my desk. So, and I hope everyone is, you know, doing well and being safe and things. I mean, obviously, 
it's hard to know what's kind of going on around the world because, you know, so many things are misreported and things like that. I mean, obviously, here we seem to be having lots of local lockdowns and things like that. Um, I mean, today, certainly on the news, there's lots of talk about university students from, at the moment, it seems certain universities, but, you know, I can only assume that's going to expand because obviously students, you know, they're all going to be behaving the same. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean, you know, there's going to be loads of students on campus at every university. So presumably, it's not going to be isolated to those one or two that are being reported today. Um, you know, so there's talk about those. Well, I think some some universities, the students have already been locked down, locked, you know, locked in or, you know, put on a lockdown or quarantine. Um, I think I think one of them might have been Manchester and I can't recall what the other two universities that they've reported were. But um Oh, it just seems kind of never ending at the moment. So, um, yeah, I really hope that everybody's doing safe and well, you know, and keeping well. It's, you know, very worrying. So we'll have to kind of wait and see, but definitely, you know, it's looking like we have... I've, I think they've, I mean, well, they've limited the numbers that can get together now to just six people. Um, and I know that this morning they were talking about potential bans now again with regards to sort of visiting other people's houses and things like that. Um, oh, I don't know. It's It's just sort of, I don't know, just uh, a scary time, I guess. Right, deciding again which side I would like kind of most visible. So this is my, I think it's Rutherford Grange, this paper. And again, I really love the pattern of this. So it's deciding which pattern that I would want most visible. Probably this one or this one. Probably that one. Okay. And I haven't been watching anything this week really. I mean I'm sure I must have I must have watched something, but nothing you know, I haven't picked up another series or anything like that yet. So um Sadly, I've got like nothing, nothing interesting that I've watched or anything that I would recommend. We must have just been watching, you know, when you just pick up odds and ends of things. So I think we've spent a couple of nights again just watching the news and things, um, you know, which we'd obviously stopped doing that for a bit during the summer. But yeah, this week we've obviously gone back to, you know, watching the news a lot more and things like that. So um, we've been watching less, you know, in the form of entertainment, I guess, really, this week. On Saturday, we'd gone for a lovely walk. Oh, I remember. So my middle son had had braces, um, you know, on his teeth. And he had them fitted two years ago. Well, you know... Not, not the braces, but they have to have all these other things first. So he had, I think they were called retainers, and then he had these elastic band things put on. And, you know, there's lots of stages to it, which I hadn't realised until, um, you know, until he had his braces, actually, that there were so many stages. But, um, yeah, so he was due to have his actual braces off back in March. And literally the week that we locked down it was the following week was when he was due to have his braces off. So, you know, the poor thing, he's obviously had his braces for a whole, you know, actually like six months longer than they should have or needed to be on. Um, you know, which of course, I mean, how disappointing to be thinking that you're going to get your braces off and then have to, you know, put up with them for a whole nother six months because obviously the dentist wasn't, well, I assume it wasn't open or possibly it was open for emergencies only, but 
then when they actually reopened, like in an official capacity, um, of course they were then, you know, only doing kind of literally emergencies. And then they obviously had a huge list of people to go down who were awaiting treatment. So, you know, it's taken this long to actually get to the point where he could finally have his braces taken off. So we went on the Thursday and um, yeah, so that was my, my whole of Thursday because um, we have to go quite a way for his braces, um, his dental treatment. So yeah, we, um, you know, drove over there. He had his braces taken off, which was amazing. He looks gorgeous and I mean, he must just feel so much nicer and better because, you know, like he said, he couldn't even kind of lick his, you know, run his tongue over his teeth and things because it was uncomfortable. So absolutely awesome. Um, super, super excited for him. And um, yeah, he's obviously thrilled to bits to have had them taken off. And then I thought, well, he's had his braces. Actually, I'm not going to do it with this because... I don't want to lose these beautiful ladies in the folds. So I'm going to keep that for another project, I think, another time. So I put that to one side. Um, so I've just got this sheet now from my roses are red. Uh, yeah, so anyway, he was so thrilled to bits. So I thought, oh, bless him, you know, let's try and kind of, you know, really make him feel lovely. So got him a haircut and things last week as well. And... Um, yeah, he obviously then was feeling super pleased and, you know, really, really thrilled to bits. So that's what we'd spent Thursday doing. So I hardly really did any work on Thursday. Um, just a couple of emails and things. But yeah, the bulk of the day was just literally driving over there, have the braces removed, driving home, going for a haircut and things. And... Um, yeah, I feel so excited for him. And honestly, his teeth look gorgeous. I mean, it's kind of incredible because he'd had this really, like, um, not deformed tooth, but he had this tooth growing right, poking through his gum, you know, coming out of his gum, like, you know, randomly kind of thing. I mean, you would think that tooth had been removed because there's no sign of that whatsoever. It has literally been you know, moved right the way down and just perfectly lines up with his other teeth now. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. I mean, obviously to begin with in the beginning of the treatment, he had a couple of back teeth re removed, um, I guess to make the rim for that tooth to be able to do that. But, you know, it's just unbelievable that, you know, your body can be so clever as to actually, from where that tooth had been, you know, and had started, you would never have thought that that tooth could actually have moved so far down, you know, to the point that you actually are kind of like, oh, did they, did they remove that tooth? And he was like, no, mum, that's the tooth that, you know, that moved down. And it was like, wow, I can't believe that's moved down. It's just unbelievable. And I mean, bless him, obviously he's spent the last couple of years feeling self-conscious and so not particularly smiling in pictures and things. Um, well, smiling, but, you know, without teeth. So, uh, yeah, he feels obviously great now to have had them taken off. And I don't think he's stopped smiling, bless him. He said he felt like suddenly he was like almost going out naked, you know, because uh, he was like missing his braces. Not missing them as in pining for them, but, you know, because this thing had come off, it was like going out without your clothes on. And um, yeah, just amazing. And as I say, his teeth were lovely and white under there. And um, yeah, he just, he looked lovely. So I was really, really, really pleased for him. There we go. Okay. So again, just trim that little sort of fraction off there like that okay right okie dokie and now let's just check what time we're up to because I feel I've been waffling for a long time so yeah I knew that we must be quite a way in now right let's count up how many we've done as I say they're super quick so we've done a lot two four six 
8, 10, 11. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? 11. You know, that's pretty, pretty awesome, I think. So I might decorate this one up um, just quickly now. Now, shall we put that book page that I've cut out at the beginning? Shall we put that in the back there? Yeah, that looks quite nice there. Yeah, I'm going to put that down there. Oops. Okay. So we're trying to be healthy eating with my daughter at the moment because, um, I mean, obviously towards the end of the lockdown, my daughter was, you know, getting into, and you know, completely our fault and not sort of saying, oh, my daughter, you know, I mean, completely our fault. You know, the whole sweet eating was getting a bit out of hand because, um, oh, well, I know that I've talked about before, you know, how everyone was complaining constantly, how there was no food in the house and, oh, gosh. And it was just becoming this never-ending thing of, you know, oh, there's no food and... So, of course, I was just buying probably any old stuff, really, so that there was a ton of things constantly to eat. And, um, yeah, I mean, so completely not my daughter's fault at all, but, I mean, of course, she has a sweet tooth and loves, loves her sweets. So her sweet eating was getting pretty, you know, out of hand and things. And, of course, obviously, we're, my husband and I were busy and we'd been kind of, you know, working from home around her. I mean, of course, there was a lot of time where... You know, she may have been on her tablet and just eating sweets. And, you know, I completely take sort of full responsibility for that. Um, anyway, so now we're all back in a routine, which is so much obviously better and easier for everybody. She feels great to be back at school. You know, I think I'd said before she was very, very bored at home. And, um, yeah, so she's really pleased as well. But so now we're trying to get back into more healthy eating. I mean, to be fair, I wasn't obviously eating sweets, you know. Um, my sons weren't particularly eating sweets, um, although they were the ones complaining that they wanted more food. But yeah, they actually weren't really eating the sweets. Um, so it was mainly her and my husband, who also is a bit of a picker, and just will sit and, I mean, not necessarily eating sweets, but certainly eating something, you know, all day long. He just likes to be eating and then he'll say I've not eaten anything today just kind of lowering my voice in case you're listening but yeah he'll say things then like oh I've not eaten anything today and I'll say oh well, is that other than that packet of crisps that I saw you eating earlier or you know is that other than the I don't know the toast that I saw you having this morning and then he'll be like oh well yeah except for that and it's like oh you've not eaten nothing then have you really so, yeah, he's one of those eaters that doesn't really kind of even realise how much he's eating. So it was him and my daughter, really, who are the sweet eaters. Um, and crisps, I have to say. They're terrible. Both of them are terrible for eating crisps. So, um, yeah, for the last two weeks, I've just not really bought anything in the way of crisps or sweets. Because, of course, if it's in the house... You know, of course, everyone wants to eat it or those those two want to eat it. So they've kind of gone cold turkey and, um, you know, had to just be kind of going without the sweets and the crisps. Oh, I'm really proud of, um, you know, my daughter. I mean, I won't say I'm proud of my husband because, you know, he's a grown man, but really proud of my daughter. She's doing so well. And so she's only now having sweets on a Saturday, you know, which is much more sensible, of course. Um, but you know, during the lockdown, it was just, it was just hard to abide by that, to be honest, because everything went out the window and, you know, some of it was just, you know, anything for an easy life. And yeah, I mean, that's naughty to say, I know, but you know, I'm sure I'm not kind of the only person who was doing things like that. So, um, yeah, anyway, we've kind of, you know, gone cold turkey as a family and just not buying any of those types of things. So it's working much better and I'm so proud because she's doing so well, you know, considering that she's gone from, you know, absolutely, oh, as soon as she was awake, it would be like, oh, you know, must have sweets. And of course, you know, she was having breakfast first, but I mean, then pretty soon after that, some days she was then on the sweets. Um, she's now really kind of like, you know, tamed herself and backtracked and, 
you know, she's now, I've filled the fridge with kind of fruit, really, instead of sweets, which, I mean, I know fruit has its own issues, you know, but, I mean, obviously, it's the lesser of two evils, I guess. You know, it's still better than sweets, isn't it? So, you know, I mean, obviously, eating eating nothing, really, between meals would be, you know, of course, the best option, but, you know, of course, children do get hungry and they do want to snack, you know, they're not like us where we can just go hours without eating, they want to snack and, you know, I, I get that. So, um, yeah, anyway, I've been buying lots more, lots more fruit and, um, you know, things like grapes and things like that, so she's just been snacking on things like that now, which she's doing really, really well, you know, doing that, so... And she's not really complained or anything, you know, I thought she'd be kind of moaning, but actually she seems to quite like the grapes and and I bought lots of those fun size apples and things like that. Um, and yeah, she seems to be quite enjoying eating that way. So, I mean, I think with kids, a lot of it, it's just boredom, isn't it? So they just, sometimes they just think they're hungry and I don't think they really are hungry at all, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm really pleased that Hopefully we're kind of now on the end of that unhealthy eating thing that we seem to have got into during that lockdown. But So she's just having sweets on Saturdays now. And um, I was very proud of her because on the Saturday, although she did, the first thing she said when she opened her eyes was, Oh mum, I'm allowed sweets today was like, wow, let's not go on about it too much because otherwise we won't have sweets today. Um, but equally, when we then went to buy her sweets, she picked bubble gum, which I was so amazed because, you know, technically that's not really even eating sweets, is it? It's just chewing them. So, you know, I thought she might have been quite greedy and tried to pick like a big family bag of sweets or something. But no, she just picked bubble gum, which... I was like, oh, are you sure? Is that is that the sweets you want? She said, oh, oh, yeah. Because she's recently learned how to blow bubbles and she's getting really good at it. I mean, some of her bubbles are massive. Absolutely massive. So, yeah, that was what she had on Saturday. And, um, yeah. So she's doing really well. But, I mean, as I say, completely, you know, I can't be blaming her or anything because it's completely my fault, you know, that she was obviously eating lots of sweets in the first place. But I think it was just, you know, one of those situations. They're at home, they're bored, and they're constantly going to the cupboard, you know. And, I mean, by sweets, I'm meaning, you know, sweets, crisps, biscuits, any of those kinds of things. I don't necessarily just mean sweets, but I just mean anything... Anything junk food related is what she was eating. So, yeah, really pleased to have kind of curbed that a little bit. Well, so far, so good anyway. Obviously, it's early days. It's only been a couple of weeks, but definitely the, the trick is just don't have those things in the house because, of course, once you do have them in the house, you know, how do you stop that? It's just difficult to then try and curb, isn't it? So... Right, I'm thinking like that is quite nice. So this is just one of my frames from my fancy frames. And this is just an oval that I've punched out and done a stamped image on, you know, sort of another time. But it was just laying in my little tray. But I think that looks quite nice in there. So I'm just going to glue this down. And then tomorrow, so on Wednesday you guys which is tomorrow for you guys obviously for me it's two days away um I'm starting my altered book series um which I was challenged by Joey Defee and 49 Dragonflies Barbara over there so thank you if you pick up this video at all or stumble across this video thank you so much for challenging me to join you in your altered book I know that they were doing more of a kind of bullet journal type theme to their altered book I don't really kind of do that type of thing myself. Um, so mine is literally like a junk journal auto book. But um, yeah, I was so excited to be, you know, challenged and invited to join their challenge by them. So that's starting on Wednesday. 
and I think I do uh, maybe about five videos or something, completing the whole of the altered book start to finish. So I know that lots of people have, um, you know, requested that I do an altered book soon. And obviously I have done altered books before, but I haven't done one for ages. And yeah, I really don't know why, to be honest, because when I did it again, at first I felt slightly nervous because I hadn't done one for so long. But um, once I got back into it, I thought, why have I not done one of these for ages? They're just so fun. So um, yeah, I'm going to be doing more altered books again, I think. So anyway, um, I do it start to finish, like going over the type of book that I've picked and, you know, how I've kind of, um, you know, used it completely. So yeah, hopefully if you've not done an altered book, hopefully it will be useful. I was going to stick that on um, this net, but actually I'm not going to. I'm going to just pop it in there, I think. Okay. Anyway, it's an autumn themed altered book. So hopefully, you know, hopefully it will be of use and maybe some inspiration to um, some people. Um, you know, if nothing else, maybe the just the whole altered book thing will be of interest to some of you guys who I know have asked, you know, for an altered book video. Um, and then super exciting, but I just launched my new Halloween kit, which is called Ghostly Gothic. And I will do just a little video kind of launching that, but then I will probably do the whole of the project that I do. Well, providing I get time, time to even do a project, but hopefully I will because, you know, I would like to use it. Um, so that's what I need to focus on really is doing that. But I probably won't video that because of course we're kind of seasonal. So I don't think I'll have time to actually film it and put it up before, before Halloween is upon us. But yeah, I will do the, just the launch video um, probably within the next week or so. Right, so I think that's probably all that that needs. I don't think it needs kind of anything else. It looks quite pretty, you know, just as it is, I think. Um, I mean, it could possibly take a butterfly or something, but I don't think it necessarily needs one. So this butterfly here, actually, I just got this from my box of butterflies beside me. This is just a Kazercraft die cut piece. And um, yeah, I mean, I just picked it up because I thought, oh, colour wise, actually, that's quite nice on there. So perhaps I will have that on there after all. Uh, where do I want it? Quite liked it at the top, but then I quite liked it down there. Perhaps I'll have it down there. Well, I'm just going to hot glue that just for speed. Yay, so we just pop that there. Okay, right, let's pull them all back in then and see what we've done. I feel like I've been waffling on for ages, so... Oh, Lord only knows. Right, okay. So these are all the ones that we've done. Obviously, you know, the rest have got the back to be filled in yet. Um, you know, but that's fine. And I think that makes them quite versatile when I come to use them. And then this obviously is the decorated one. So I hope that um, you enjoyed the mass make and have fun if you decide to make some of these pockets. Um, yep, don't forget to join me for my altered book starting on Wednesday. And um, yeah, don't forget to join me for Ikea on Friday. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks then. Bye.